Welcome everyone. I am Susan Brady and thank you for joining me together today. So several years ago, I put together a holistic approach to assessing and addressing bone health. And I call this approach my BONES method. And BONES is an acronym. B is for balanced nutrition. O for optimized digestion, N for nurture the body and the soul, E for essential exercise, and S for smart supplementation. And today I want to focus on the N, on nurturing the body and the soul. And this is so important to nurture ourselves. And it's often overlooked when we're putting together a plan to take care of our bones. So what do I mean by nurturing the body and the soul? I mean be kind to yourself, be kind to your body. Make sure it's getting the downtime it needs to repair and replenish itself, to overcome the stress and the demands of the day. Stress absolutely negatively affects our bones because it causes a release in cortisol and cortisol is known to be what we call a catabolic hormone, meaning that it causes tissue breakdown. And our bones are tissue like any other organ in our body, and high levels of cortisol can also cause your bones to break down. And that's why it's really important to have an outlet for your stress, like meditation or prayer or listening to music, reading a group book, yoga, art, exercise. Whatever brings you joy and helps to put your mind at ease is what you need to be doing, I would say, at least on a daily basis. The other aspect of nurturing your body and your soul is getting enough sleep. Most of us don't understand all the amazing benefits of sleep, from living longer and enhancing your memory warding off dementia and disease, sleep is the foremost nourisher of our health and we need sleep to nourish our bones. So here's what the science says about sleep and osteoporosis. So there's one study that showed that sleep disruption can alter bone metabolism and decrease bone formation, which then leads to bone loss, bone fractures. It's also been demonstrated that people with sleep disorders like sleep apnea have an increased risk of osteoporosis. And then just recently, as November of 2019, there was research suggesting that postmenopausal women who slept less than five hours a night have a higher risk of developing osteoporosis. So our, for our bones to be healthy, they need to get enough sleep because it's when we sleep that's when our body and our bones repair and rebuild themselves and in regards to our bones we have these specialized bone cells called osteocytes and they're at night they're hard at work regulating the body's calcium levels repairing the microscopic fractures or cracks in the bones and orchestrating the whole bone remodeling process. And if we're not sleeping, none of those things can happen. And I know as we get older and we go through menopause and hormone change, our hormones change, it can get harder and harder to get a full night's sleep. But there are a couple things that you can do that might help. So number one, get some morning sunshine in your eyes. Getting that morning light in your eyes helps to set your daily circadian rhythm or that internal clock that keeps us in sync with the day and helps to regulate our sleep-wake cycles. You also want to try to stick to a consistent sleep schedule. Um, you know, that's also going to help to solidify your sleep-wake cycle. So staying up late to finish a work project and then say, well, I'm just going to make it up, um, you know, on the weekend, it's only going to further disrupt your body's natural clock or natural rhythm. So try and go to sleep and get up at the same time every day. 
you also really need to limit your tech time in the evening. Put away your phones, your tablets, your computers in the evening, at least an hour before you go to bed, because these screens emit a blue light, which is very similar to the sun's light. And that can confuse your brain into thinking that it's still daytime when it's actually nighttime. And then it's always good to have a good bedtime ritual or a bedtime routine. So your body knows that you're preparing to sleep. So it might be taking a warm bath or shower, doing meditation or prayer or reading, anything that helps you to relax and wind down. And then another biggie is making sure your bedroom environment is conducive for sleep. We actually sleep better when it's cool and dark. I actually sleep best when the thermostat set to 67 degrees and I also wear a light blocking mask and earplugs so I must look really adorable when I sleep. But I need these things to block out the light and the noise so that I can get undisrupted sleep at night. And the last thing is to be conscious about what you are eating and drinking in the hours prior to bedtime. Again, for me, if I have a sugary dessert after dinner, I for sure will have trouble sleeping that night. For others, even the littlest bit of caffeine is going to disrupt their sleep. And then, of course, too much alcohol can definitely interfere with sleep. Although alcohol might make you feel sleepy because it's a sedative, it doesn't actually induce a natural sleep that is restorative. So it can lead to waking up more frequently at night and certainly interfere with your normal sleep cycles. There are many natural remedies that also can be effective for, um, you know, effective aid for sleeping. You might find some remedies that have ingredients like melatonin or magnesium, 5-HTP, also a neurotransmitter called GABA or an amino acid called L-theanine. And I've seen these remedies work wonders for some people. Um, other people, they don't work. And then there are also many wonderful herbs or herbal teas that have things like valerian root, chamomile, lavender, lemon balm, and they can be very helpful as well. Sleep is really too important to your health, to your bones, to your body, to your brain to be neglected. So if you are struggling to get a good night's sleep, try making some of the lifestyle changes that I recommended. Cool your room off, make sure it's really dark, establish a bedtime routine, um, have a cup of herbal tea, turn off your electronics. And if it doesn't work after a week or so, then think about seeking out help. Reach out to your healthcare practitioner so that you can explore you know, other ways as to how you, know, you can get a good night's sleep and possibly even uncover you know, the deeper reasons why you might be having difficulty sleeping. Because remember, in order to nourish your bones, you need to get a good night's sleep. Thank you for joining me. Please leave me any comments or questions that you may have. And I look forward to connecting with you again next week. And I hope you get a good night's sleep.